Hi guys, today topic is renal tubular acidosis, which is a continuation. I um, teach you about the renal tubular acidosis type 1 in the previous lecture. Today we will discuss about the renal tubular acidosis type 2. So before going into the detail, we need to know that where is the uh, renal tubular acidosis type 2 is occurring. So renal tubular acidosis type 2 is occurring in your proximal convoluted tubule. So one way I remember this that uh, I know you guys can confuse that where is the type uh, the RTA 1 is occurring and where is the RTA 2 is occurring. So I remember that way maybe it helps you that renal tubular acidosis type uh, 1 is occurring in the DCT and renal tubular acidosis type 2 is occurring in the PCT. So you know the PCT is the first part of the nephron, right? So proximate convoluted tubule is the first part of the nephron. So technically you can think that RTA type 1 should be, uh, should be occurring in the proximal, right? So what is happening? It is opposite over here. Your type 2 is occurring, RTA Type 2 is occurring in the PCT and your uh, type 1 is occurring in the DCT, if it helps you guys, okay. So what is normally happening, so normally what happening, most of your substances, right, most of the your substances are reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule, like glucose, amino acids, bicarbonate, phosphate, they all are reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule, right. So that's why renal tubular acidosis type 2 is sometime or uh, somehow mimicking with the Fanconi syndrome, which is a reabsorptive defect in which you cannot reabsorb all of these substances, which I told you, glucose, amino acid, phosphate, bicarbonate and all that. So in this normally what happened, bicarbonate is reabsorbed from the tubular lumen into your blood, right? From tubular lumen into your blood normally. So our defect is saying that your bicarbonate is not reabsorbed from the tubular lumen. So I'm writing tubular lumen back into your blood. So here is the defect. So what would be result? It result in bicarbonate reabsorption defect, right? Bicarbonate reabsorption defect which leads to the bicarbonaturia. So as I told you, there are some consequences of the renal tubular acidosis type 1, I told you. Similarly, renal tubular acidosis type 2 also have some consequences. Let me discuss that with you. So renal acidosis type 2. So number 1, what is happening? Normally bicarbonate is reabsorbed into the, from the tubular lumen into the blood. Over here, this is not happening. So your bicarbonate is staying into your tubular lumen. So back in your body, when you are not reabsorbing bicarbonate, what stays happen in your body? You are correct. You will have metabolic acidosis, right? Because you are not reabsorbing the bicarbonate, right? So what is happening next? That this chronic acidosis, your body condition, it leads to the decreased calcium reabsorption, right? Metabolic acidosis leads to the decreased calcium reabsorption. So your calcium will stay into the tubular lumen, right? That is the second point. So let me write this is one point and this is the second point. Now the third point is when this bicarbonate, it reaches over here, it creates the increased negativity or luminal negativity because it is the negative ion, right? Due to this increased negative luminality, lumen uh, ion or lumen charge, it will lead to the increased secretion, excretion of the potassium into your blood. So increased potassium secretion into your the tubular lumen will be happening. So potassium will become over here. So back into the blood what will be happen? Back in the blood you have hypokalemia. So that is your third point, hypokalemia. And the fourth point is that when your bicarbonate, it is not reabsorbed over here. So bicarbonate is coming into the tubular lumen, right? So inside the tubular lumen, your urine alkalinity will be increased. That is 5.5 because bicarbonate is not reabsorbed, right? So it will give the urine alkalinity greater than 5.5. But when your bicarbonate reach into the last part of the nephron, your hydrogen ion, because they are normally secreted, here is no defect, right? So your hydrogen ion are secreted into your tubular lumen. So this hydrogen ion which is secreted into the tubular lumen, they combine with the bicarbonate ion and they form carbonic acid, right? So carbonic acid is acid. 
So that leads to the alkaline urine become less than 5.5. That is why they give that the urine alkalinity will be increased 5.5 but later it become less 5.5 because of the hydrogen ion secretion into the collecting duct. So that is your fourth point. Now come about to the uh, last point that we know that hypokalemia and metabolic acidosis, they both lead to the increased reabsorption of citrate in, from the proximal tubule. We discussed in the previous lecture. So citrate will be reabsorbed in the proximal converted tubule under the influence of hypokalemia and metabolic acidosis. But in this condition, your proximal converted tubule is defected. So, no citrate will be reabsorbed, right? So, this citrate is stay in your tubular lumen. Now, this citrate will stay in the lumen. This go to the calcium and calcium combined with the citrate, right, to form a complex which is normally excreted into your urine. So, that is the reason, that is the reason you don't have kidney stone in case of renal tubular acidosis type 2, right? renal tubular acidosis type 2. So what are the overall picture? You are not reabsorbing bicarbonate. You have metabolic acidosis number one. Number two, due to metabolic acidosis, body cannot reabsorb calcium. So calcium stay in your gut, right? Number two. Number three, due to the luminal negativity because of the bicarbonate ion, potassium is secreted into the gut, right? And lead to the hypokalemia. And the fourth point is when this bicarbonate reaches to the collecting tubule, your hydrogen ion are secreted. That changes your pH initially five, greater than 5.5, but at the end pH is less than 5.5 due to the hydrogen which is secreted into the tubule. And the last point which has explained you that hypokalemia and metabolic acidosis, hypokalemia and metabolic acidosis lead to citrate reabsorption normally, but in this case, you have defect in the proximal converted tubule. So this citrate reabsorption will be defected. So citrate will be stained to tubular lumen. It combined with the calcium to form calcium citrate complex and it is normally excreted into urine. So that's why RTA2 don't have kidney stones. That is all about the RTA2. Now we will discuss about the RTA4 in the next uh, slide. Thank you so much guys. Stay tuned with me.